Welcome back. Before we finish our lampshade, I would like to talk a little bit more about parametric design and our T-spline model body. We can see that right now, we modeled our body in place, so we can still move it around, meaning it's not joined. So I know that I could go to assemble as built joint, select this body and my washer with a rigid joint and go OK. This seems to be right because as I move my lampshade arm around, all of my components move with it. However, let's see what happens when we update our user parameters. I will go to modify, change parameters, and I will change my thickness to 10 and let's see what kind of changes we've made. We can see that right away, our lampshade washer has dropped inside and our lampshade appears to have slid further away from our lampshade arm. Well, what actually happened is when our lampshade arm and the entire assembly updated, because we used an as-built joint, our parts did not move together. The as-built joint did not specify a position for either of my objects, so when I updated my user parameter, my lampshade had no reason to move. So I will go to undo, and let's place a joint origin and then a rigid joint, not an as-built joint, to attach our lampshade and our rubber washer. So first I will go to assemble joint origin, and you can see that as I hover over my lampshade, I cannot get exact locations anywhere on my model. T-spline objects and then surfaces do not allow you to place points anywhere on the model, only at specific locations. We can see this line running up and down the side of my lampshade, and that represents the start and end of essentially this revolve. You can see I can place my joint origin anywhere along this line or around the outside edge it will snap to this point. So I will hold control, and you can see that I can snap to the bottom edge, midpoint, and top edge. I will hold control and select the top edge, and I'll zoom in so that we can see this point. First, I can see that if I hide my rubber washer, that my joint origin has come in facing perpendicular to the top of my circle. I want to reorient this so that it is flat, so I will go reorient, and I'll choose this surface. You will notice that we also have the option to choose the x-axis. I want to match this x-axis to what we have in our model, so I will go select and choose this back edge here to reorient my joint origin. Now I can drag in, and I know this is negative 15 millimeters because the original size of our cylinder was 30 millimeters diameter. So moving at 15 places it in the center, and I can hit Enter to place my joint origin. I'll hit the light bulb to turn back on my rubber washer, and we can now place our joint. I can go Joint, first choose the joint origin we just created, and then I will orbit my model so that I am looking at the bottom of the washer and choose this bottom edge, and you can see it is selecting the center of that circle. We now have a rigid joint that appears for those two objects. I'll go OK, and now let's see what happens. I can move my objects around, and they are stuck together, and let's check our user parameters. I'll go Modify, Change Parameters, and let's update this to 10 one more time. This time, we see that the joint is moving my model and updating when I update my user parameters. I can change both of these parameters as much as I'd like, and my lampshade and the rest of my model will update accordingly. I will change these back to 30 and 15 and hit OK. So let's go ahead and save our file. And I will right click Unisolate to show the rest of my lampshade components. I'll go to my home view and let's select these, right click Create Group, and save my file one more time. 
In the next video, we will finish the lampshade modeling. I will see you in the next video.